Good evening, Twitch. Good evening, YouTube viewers. And welcome to Birth of a World. So, uh, after the previous stream's frustration with getting the right windows up on the screen, I've decided I'm just going to use a full screen capture uh, instead of doing the thing um, to screw around with the various text editor windows and stuff like that that I had up. Um, so as a result, now you'll get to see everything exactly as I see it, and I don't have to worry about not having the right thing on the screen, because um, I know that kind of, well, sucks to watch. Uh, today, uh, for today's stream, we're going to be talking about kind of expanding the scope of our campaign world from the small town of Tin Cliff out to the surrounding region. Uh, so we'll look at the kind of what we said we had as kind of the points at the edge of the map before, and we'll be zooming out um, now to actually start populating those parts of the map. So today's topics, we're going to talk about uh, states, primarily nations. Given that this is kind of an industrial era technology, we can expect that we will have nations rather than, say, individual city-states or feudal kingdoms. Although city-states are a thing that, does, that do exist and we might find uh, in our campaign world. I've got this page up from the uh, D20 Pathfinder uh, SRD uh, talking about how fast you can move in a vehicle. And there's a reason for this. Uh, I'm not a particularly great artist, and I'm not a particularly great cartographer. Uh, I'm an engineer by trade, so I am not going to be drawing world map freehand, per se, or at least certainly not starting from there. What I like to do instead is I've got a hex grid uh, set up over here on Inkscape. Uh, and we're going to be using basically each hex. The distance between a hex is going to be roughly how far you can travel in, say, an hour. Um, so in this case, given that the primary means of transportation other than railroad is still going to be horseback, we're going to say that on our hex grid there, the distance between two hexes is about five miles. Obviously, how fast you actually move through the area will depend on what the terrain's like. So since our terrain is mountainous, it'd probably take considerably longer to ride a horse through the mountains, even if they only occupy a few hexes. But what it is is a kind of shorthand so that we can do uh, what I've kind of dubbed the Settlers of Catan way of creating a world map, which is we're going to start it with a hex grid of uh, blank hexes and just kind of start marking off the, what the terrain is for each of these hexes. Making notes, you know, is it steep, difficult terrain? Is it forest? Is it swampland? Once we've got the terrain figured out, we'll then go over a pass to figure out where the territory boundaries are. Uh, normally, territory boundaries will follow some natural landmark like a mountain ridge or a river, things like that. So we'll be marking those out and kind of figuring out, okay, what are these nations like? One thing I do tend to favor in most of the stories that I tell is warfare, particularly large-scale warfare between nations as kind of an external threat. Not necessarily that the party members are taking part in the war or like fighting on the front lines or anything like that, but simply that there is this threat of greater conflict going on uh, kind of outside of the area the player characters are in. So we'll be talking a bit about that if there's time today, but we're going to start off with terrain. So here we have our completely blank slate, but let's pull up the map of uh, Tin Cliff that we've been working on for the past couple of videos. That's the wrong map. Hold on a second. Do, 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 do. Uh, that's a blank map, apparently. Where are we? There's Tin Cliff. Okay. So here we have Tin Cliff, right? So we've talked about before we have the Tin Cliff town with its little railroad, and it's located in a valley in the mountains. And to the north, we've got the Black Hills, and to the south, we have Copperholm, which is probably a city, possibly a city state. Uh, and then whatever territories are beyond, which we'll figure out as we work here today. So let's grab the other map back up. And I'm just going to get my drawing apparatus out. Okay. And we're going to drop a pin, basically, where we say Tin Cliff's going to be. So let's do... Uh, no. Let's unlock my layer first, uh, since we're going to be filling in these kind of cells. And uh, do dot, I guess. Make a gonna make a nice little black dot. We'll say right about here is where Tin Cliff is. Gonna make the uh, hexes a bit more visible here. So there's Tin Cliff. There's the town of Tin Cliff. 
And then, so we know that Tin Cliff, the area around there is mountains. So I'm gonna grab my flood fill now. And I was fiddling with this a bit before. Let's see if I can get this working right. So we're gonna use kind of a darkish gray for steep mountains. And if I flood fill this cell, is that gonna work? Yes. Okay, I need to turn the stroke off though, because that just looks a bit silly. Um, do, 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 do. No, stroke. Now, can we have this, please? Yes, that looked good. Okay. So, um, so we know the area of Tin Cliff is in the mountains. So we can color that gray. Uh, and now we're going to go through and kind of just start coloring in these cells. Uh, we, you can stick to the basic settlers of Catan, the four, the kind of, the four land types, right? You have mountains. You have uh, wastelands or barrens, whatever you want to call it. You have plains uh, and you have forests. In this case, we can kind of expand upon that. We can have heavy mountains, we can have foothills, we can have uh, lakes and oceans and things like that. Don't feel like just because I said Settlers of Catan that it's uh, constrained to Settlers of Catan. Uh, for anyone who's watching who's new to the stream and is watching live on Twitch, this is an interactive broadcast. You're very welcome to make suggestions in the chat or ask me any questions you have, either about what I'm doing uh, or the DMing process in general uh, as we go through here this evening. And I'll be asking the chat for suggestions for a few things. Like, let's start with, um, let's start with a simple question here for anyone who's in the chat. Is Tin Cliff going to be, say, in the middle of a continent, like it's far from the ocean, it's in the interior? Or is it maybe going to be on a mountain range uh, closer to the coast? Basically, how much blue am I going to draw on this map? Uh, how close is Tincliffe to the coast? Delcos asks, how often do I stream? I do this show every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Pacific time. Every week. I've been doing it for, this is the fifth show, I believe. So I've been doing it for over a month now. And I will keep doing it as long as there's someone watching. Lineart says coastal for the city. Okay. So we can do that. We can do that. We can make, so obviously it's in the mountains, but we can say this is a coastal mountain range. Uh, and I'm going to say it's a bit further from the coast. I'm going to drop a few more mountains, a few more tiles of mountain here. Uh, we'll do like that. And then we'll say we got ocean here. Uh, I think for ocean color, I'm going to use a uh, cyan, actually dark blue. What am I saying? Oceans are dark blue, right? Why are you not setting? Okay, fine. Apparently I have to pick this with this thing. There we go. No. Okay. Inkscape has not the greatest UI, unfortunately, but it is free and open source, which I kind of love. So, so we're going to draw a coast here. I'm going to say that that's where the coast that uh, Tin Cliff is near is located. I'm not going to bother filling in all the waters all the water cells. Oh, thank you, Dalcos. That's very kind of you. Dalcos says I've got a great voice for radio, I guess. Um, that's very kind of you. Okay, so we've got these nice steep, probably big steep mountains here that kind of fall into the coastline. Very dramatic. Think like Norway, probably. Uh, we'll, call, we'll end up making these really steep cliffs. Uh, I'm not going to draw on all the water because I think it's just going to be a lot of cells of blue. Um, but I'm going to kind of figure out where the coastline is going to be. So we know that this is on the mount this mountains are on the coast here. But I'm going to make it kind of a curved in coastline, I think. Uh, again, the goal here really is to get a general impression of what the area is like. It doesn't have to be uh, super detailed yet. Uh, we're just getting a feel for the place. Uh, so I'm just going to outline where I think I'll put a coastline. Coasts are generally dotted with lots of little bays and bits. It's not, it's never, you never want to draw a straight line for a coast. You always want to have it curving in and, and having little bays and little bits and peninsulas and stuff like that, because places like that are where you can then later go in and put something interesting. Like maybe there's a bay that, you know, is well suited to a big harbor. So you drop a big harbor in there later on, and that becomes, you know, a major point in your settlement. We've got one town right now. We've got one town in the name of another town. Uh, and so we're going to have to figure out uh, exactly what Copperholm, the other town, uh, is like. All we know is that it's located here, kind of south, southwest of Tin Cliff. Um, so I've got this piece of coast here. Let's figure out what direction the mountains go next. Uh, so let's grab my dark gray again. Is that the right gray? That looks like the right gray. 
to remember that it doesn't keep um, it keeps the thing I just drew selected. Uh, I'm going to extend these mountains up here towards the kind of westward. Uh, maybe they get a bit wider or they stay kind of wide. Lineart suggests fjords. It's not a bad idea. Maybe I'll extend the water up into this area here, just kind of south. Um, but we do know that the rail line's going this way, so maybe not. Or maybe it, there's a, there could be like a shallow inlet or something like that. Or maybe there's a bridge. This is, industri this is industrial tech. We can make big iron bridges and stuff like that over the river. Maybe we'll do that. That could be fun. That's a good idea, line art. Thank you. Um, so let's see. Mountains also make a good natural border. So we basically, by putting Tincliffe in the mountains, kind of decided it's probably going to be in a borderly area. Uh, I'm going to take these mountains, kind of continue meandering them roughly northwest. I'm going to say this is a, probably a major mountain range for the whole continent. Um, now again, remember, we're trying to say that the distance between two points is an hour um, by travel, so I actually need to make these mountains a bit bigger here, I think, because this is going to be a major mountain range. So I'm going to kind of color this in a bit more. So now the, area, the Black Hills, which we said was up here somewhere, is now much further away. Um, so when we get to adding details like where the railroad goes and stuff like that, I'm totally going to put a fjord with a bridge over it. Actually, let's draw in that fjord now, um, just for the sake of, because it's awesome. Okay, so let's draw in that fjord now. Just right up there like that, make it a nice big deep dagger of water cutting into the continent like that. Maybe it opens up a bit more down here. Um, one thing I will say uh, about, drawing, about drawing maps is scale doesn't really matter. I know blasphemy from a map, from map maker, but uh, for maps that are especially dealing with fantasy worlds, uh, scale doesn't matter because your characters are going to be moving at the speed of plot. Uh, I know there are rules and stuff like that for dealing with random encounters and kind of figuring out, you know, okay, you're on the road for this many days, you're going to encounter this many, you know, nasty bits of wildlife or brigands on the road or whatever. Screw that. Screw all of that. Screw all of the dealing with random encounters while you're traveling. You're here, the players are here to participate in the plot. And unless brigands on the road happens to be something your campaign is about, you don't have to waste your breath on it. Don't waste a minute of your player's time dealing with what happens on the road. Tell them it takes you guys, you know, three weeks to travel from one end of the continent to the other via rail. It's an uneventful time. You spend your time, you know, sharpening your swords, restock, making arrows, doing whatever it is you do, knitting, whatever your character's kind of hobbies and interests are. Uh, we're not going <coughs> to be spending it... We're not going to be spending it... Uh, fighting our way across the continent through wave after wave of magical creatures that somehow all like to congregate near the major highway that's frequently traveled. It's preposterous. Um, so we're not going to do that. So I've taken the mountains that way now, and I think I'm going to cut them again back over this way. Uh, another thing, don't feel too bad about uh, making the geography believable. Leinart suggests perhaps the bridge is a masterwork of an older civilization. I could buy that. We haven't really talked about yet if we're going to have like a race of builders or stuff like that. You know, normally you've got, uh, to go with like the standard Tolkien setting, you'd have dwarves probably who build these enormous feats of engineering, um, dwarves or humans, generally speaking. But uh, in this case, we haven't decided who our builder race is going to be yet. We haven't really talked about races at all yet. We talked about... Uh, we haven't talked about races at all. We talked about just the fact that Tincliffe is inhabited by tieflings and is the whole town's owned by a wealthy dwarven baron uh, to kind of start getting the racial landscape of things going. But we haven't decided yet exactly uh, what really anything about the people. And that's something we're going to be coming up with as we work our way through uh, building these nations here today. Is we're going to talk about uh, who's the dominant race? Like, who 
runs these places and how kind of discriminatory are they against other races, right? If you look at, you know, leaders of the leaders of these nations, uh, what's the face of the leader always look like, right? What's the face that people trust? So we've got our mountain range here now. Again, I'm not bothering to fill in these areas. This is just a lo-fi test. Uh, we said Copperholm was somewhere over here, and I'm actually going to start. Let's switch over and just quickly make a note about that rail bridge. Uh, so let's switch over to my freehand line tool. Uh, need line. I'll oh, draw the line weight later. Um, do 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 do. Let's grab. Uh, well, show up good on here. Red will show up good on here. Let's grab a red line. So this is going to be our rail line. Um, the part we've got so far. So we know it comes through Tincliffe and we're going to make it come kind of down here and across the fjord, across a bridge, maybe wind through the mountains a bit more and we'll have it come out over there for now. And just need to zoom in here so I can grab the other end of it. And then the other end of it we're going to, whoops, the other end of it we're going to have it kind of arc its way through the mountains here. And again, it's going to be following a natural valley, right? You're not going to be cutting through the mountains much because um, that's just not economical. So I said you should be red. There we go. Uh, and let's get up the stroke weight. Do, 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 do. Make this a nice thicker line. Bring it up to like two and a half. All right, so there's our rail line so far. And... Uh, Smooth that out a bit. Okay. So there's our rail line, as we have it so far. Copperholm sounds like a place where they mine copper. It sounds like a mine. So I'm also I'm going to make it another village in the city. In the in the city, yeah, right. A village in the city. Um, I'm going to make it another settlement in the mountains. So I'm just going to stick that right on the edge of the mountain, though, not deep in the mountains, just right about there. Uh, so we've got uh, Tincliffe, and now we've got Copperholm, and I will put na I'll put name tags on these guys, um, obviously. Uh, for anyone who's joined us in the Twitch chat, uh, this is a interactive podcast where we're talking about world creation. Uh, if you have any questions or want to make a suggestion, feel free to just kind of shout it out in chat. Um, additionally, I will be asking the chat questions on various uh, important decisions. Right now what we're doing is we're drawing a region map in incredibly low resolution. Basically each hex here is going to be an hour's travel from the other hexes next to it, roughly speaking. Um, and then we're doing kind of a Settlers of Catan thing to fill it in. So if anyone's just joined us, that's what we're doing right now. The red line is a rail line that we've already established exists uh, in this setting. So we've got our two towns. Uh, we know that this area is black. Pretend I didn't do that. Uh, we know that this area here is called the Black Hills, so let's uh, draw some foothills now. Uh, I tend to like to use light green, uh, we'll use lime, whatever, um, for our foothill. Fill. Do, 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 fill tool. All right. Now I just have to turn the stroke off again because Inkscape. <sighs> because Inkscape. Okay. Sorry about that. I do also have GIMP installed. I should probably be using that instead, but I'm not sure how good that is for doing vector diagrams. So this is going to be foothills. Actually, here's a question for chat, and bonus points down who guesses where I'm going with it. What direction does the wind blow in this area here? Does the wind blow from uh, east to west, or does it blow from west to east? Uh, answer me that, chat. Well, I fill in kind of the foothill area. Wrong thing. Do, 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 do. Any suggestion from chat? No, there's a bit of a delay. I'll give you another minute or so.
west to east. Okay. All right, chat says west to east. Cool. Okay, so the wind flowing from the west uh, means that these mountains here uh, are going to create a rain shadow. Um, not unlike uh, if anyone's ever been to, uh, uh, like, the in, away for, in Washington State, further from the coast, uh, it very, very quickly turns into desert and uh, arid landscape. Uh, so that's what this area is going to be in here then. We're going to have this be a desert. I'm just going to grab my nice... Uh, Uh, so I'm going to grab my nice brownish yellow and start filling this area in as desert. Let's let the Inkscape catch up here. Mm-hmm. So we've got this desert, and it might be an arid badlands desert, or it might be a sandy desert. Uh, we can decide that later. And that desert's going to extend up right along this whole frontier. Let's see how that looks. Sure. I'll make it stretch out this way a bit, too. So north of the ocean, though, So north of the ocean, though, you know, we've got this ocean here. That's going to bring in storms, and they're going to sweep in, uh, and they'll be able to, you know, kind of irrigate this whole um, area here where I'm kind of mousing over. So that's probably not going to be desert. We can safely say that will probably um, be more temperate, kind of seasonal type area, maybe. I don't know, but it's going to be more normal, not extreme climate. So let's make another mountain range. Um, I do like... Actually, wait, let's talk about, no, we've got our fjord. Okay, I was going to say we're missing a fjord, but we've got that. Uh, um, I want to make another mountain range. I like the idea, kind of, uh, think South Central Europe where there's mountain ranges and they make, or actually um, Balkans, think like there's a bunch of, bunch of countries all kind of divided by mountain ranges and bits of terrain and stuff like that. I kind of like that um, for this setting. I feel like, you know, the idea, the image of like, magically powered locomotives trundling through a uh, steep mountain terrain is kind of, I, I like it. I like the seal of that. So I think I'm going to just put some more mountains in here. Um, just to further kind of cut the area up, maybe we'll put a couple more fjords in here too. But I just want another mountain range kind of goes like this, I think. And it's going to kind of go also um, northwest to southeast uh, and turn the area around Copperholm into sort of a valley, kind of a natural passage. Thank you for catching up, Inkscape. I'm just going to go all the way off the edge of the map like that. And maybe this will come to about here and then I'm going to go in and it's going to be nice and like nice narrow finger of a mountain with a big deep uh, fjord going up it. I do like that word, fjord. Just I don't know. I, have a, I work with someone who's from Norway. I should ask him, like, if that word has any meaning other than the terrain feature that uh, we Westerners call uh, a fjord. I say Westerners, whatever, as opposed to, like, Northmen. I work with a Northman from Norway. Okay, let's let Inkscape catch up and see what that looks like. Kind of looks like if you picture it and like rotate it uh, counterclockwise about 60 degrees, it kind of looks like a guy sticking his hand up and raising the finger. Um, completely unintentional, but people see things in maps all the time. People see shapes. You don't believe how hard it is to make maps not look phallic sometimes. Uh, to make like things just like, I didn't see that when I drew it, but now that it's there, I cannot unsee it. Uh, it's such a it's such a pain, especially with some of the people I've played D and D with. Okay, let's color in this fjord here. What do we think? Is that enough mountains, or do we need another mountain range somewhere in this area? 
I feel like this is probably more than an hour's travel between hexes now, but that's okay. We're just creating stuff and we can actually settle on a scale later. Uh, Lineart says, I totally want to see uh, Capital City in the middle of that jetty. Uh, yeah, maybe. And uh, Rockus Bacchus, <laughs> nice, nice name, uh, is asking what app is this? This is an app called, this is called Inkscape. Uh, it is a free open source vector drawing tool. Um, I choose vector drawing because I can totally just zoom in as tight as I want or zoom out as much as I want. Um, so for making maps, it makes it really nice um, to be able to kind of always never have pixels showing, right? Like I can zoom all the way in and zoom all the way out. Uh, so um, Delcos asks on the left side, is that a mountain range or cliffs? Um, probably mountain range. Uh, we could make it cliffs. Like we can kind of, if we say that we've got, you know, maybe grass, we've got uh, highland, whatever, uh, on the interior of this, like that. Basically, I haven't decided to fill it in yet, but uh, I suspect most of it will be mountains, but maybe we can make it just steep cliffs. Like this is a great big highland uh, or plateau um, that exists here. And that would actually make it really nice for, Lineart was saying, we can put a capital there in the, in the head, so to speak, in the head area. And I am game for that. So we are putting a nation up here on this plateau. Um, I'm going to make the mountain range at the board, at the uh, northeastern border be a bit wider. But uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's make this all highlands. Uh, fill this guy all the way in. And we will drop a great big old city right there in the middle of it. So again, let's wait, let Inkscape catch up. It's nice that at least the UI doesn't freeze while it's trying to figure this stuff out. Like I can keep clicking and it will keep working. Uh, but yeah, this is a nice big plateau with uh, fjords cut into it. Kind of like uh, there was a zone in WoW in like, in like uh, Wrath of the Lich King that had uh, fjords like that. It was one of the alliance zones, I think, uh, in Northrend. You like come in a big fjord and then you go up a lift to the town. Uh, something like that. I feel like maybe that's how this town works. So I'm going to fill in this area here that we know is mountains. Okay, buffer. Go. Cliffs of Dover. Yep, yeah, that's another good, another good analogy. Uh, these could, you know, when we, if we visit this area, we could make these white cliffs. Like right now, we just know that it's, there's cliffs here. Uh, and that's going to kind of inform our knowledge of the terrain and geology and stuff like that. So one thing, uh, so this has like a grassland on one side, and then there's this big ridge with lots of cliffs and mountains. And uh, if you've ever seen uh, the way some terrain forms, let me draw it, draw it out for you. I'll explain what I mean. You get uh, terrain that's like uh, you get terrain that's like this kind of kind of a sawtooth shaped mountains, a bit more like that actually. Uh, and if you look at them from the side, sometimes they'll have these kind of bands that run along them uh, parallel to the top of it. Howling Fjord, line art. I think that's right. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. So you have these. That's basically what's happened there, right? Is um, when you get a plate passing under another plate, it makes this kind of shape where the rock kind of fills in underneath it uh, like that. And so you get these big thrusted up peaks. And that's what this area's terrain is probably like, because it's probably, we're over here, right? We're on this kind of, on the rising side. And then it cuts off sharply in these cliffs and they've been weathered away by the ocean waves on one side and by the other side, they're still there and they're these big sharp cliffs. Um, Last thing I'm going to do here today is uh, go through and label all these kind of mountain ranges and stuff like that with a few descriptors just so we know what they're like. Um, let's go back to kind of filling in some detail here. Um, I have to turn stroke off again. Okay. Do do do. Uh, we're going to go through this area here. It's going to be highlands again. 
actually, no, it doesn't have to be highlands. What am I saying? This is an area that's been forced downward um, by tectonic action, so that's actually not what that's going to be. Let's take those out. Um, that actually can be, we can basically have forest uh, all the way up to the edge of the, those, those cliffs, and maybe we'll have a river that runs along the base of them, uh, like I've seen in some other places. But uh, this doesn't have to be highlands. This, cause this is a ground that's basically being forced down and underneath by the tectonic forces, protecting the world against the evil tectonic forces. No. So that can be uh, kind of a darker green for our river, for our valley, and that can be forest or something like that. Um, I'm also going to have the forest. We have a line of highlands, but mostly this is going to be a, a this valley is going to be forest or uh, possibly farmland. We can kind of convert some of the dark green to farmland later on. Um, it's going to be a pleasant place, probably. I think I'm picturing like uh, Switzerland, kind of. You know, you have a nice valley with the uh, highlands and then trees and river and stuff like that in the bottom. Uh, so let's also draw in that river and make a note of that. Uh, so, fill, oops, unselect, damn you, fill not. Uh, I'm going to use a lighter blue for the river. And we can just put in a river like right about here. running along the base of this ridge out to the sea. Mm -hmm. Oops, not that. Light blue. Make it a wide river. All right. And as always, let's sim smooth that out a bit. OK, so we have our river now. Okanagan Valley, BC, another excellent real-world example. Uh, let's also, while we're here drawing lines, uh, see if we can grab this guy again. Grab the our railroad and uh, extend him on out. So the railroad's going to come into this valley, and I don't think it's going to be able to cross these mountains. I think this is going to be a real steep incline, right? We said that it's low here and very high over here. So it's going to have to make a turn to go up the valley, and it's not going to connect to the capital that we said we're going to have uh, up on that peak. It's going to connect it that way. Uh, there's some Z-ordering. I'll fix that probably between videos because I think that's a boring part. Um, it's, going to go, it's going to follow the river because there's probably going to be more towns on the river, uh, more places for the rail line to serve. But it will go up to the rail line, up, go up that way. Actually, if I just uh, rise it to the top, there we go. Okay. See, it wasn't hard at all to fix. So we've got Tincliffe, Copperholm, and this river valley now uh, between the ro between these huge mountain ranges, and it's got a railroad running up it. That's cool. Um, let's grab the. Uh, Let's put our capital here. Uh, let's actually do something different for the capital. Let's do a big square. Big square. And furthermore, let's uh, rotate that 40. Grr. This is why you work in layers, kids. With vector editing, it's not always necessary, but it is still helpful. So we've got this big black diamond here, and that's going to be that big capital city that's located up there. Uh, yeah, Rockus Bacchus. So the, the scale we're doing this at is at about one hour of tra one hour's travel per hex. Uh, in practice, it's probably more like two or three, um, just because we've kind of been drawing features that are would be rather small if they were an hour of travel um, per hex. Uh, the key thing about drawing a region map for D and D though is uh, that the players are going to move exactly as fast as you need them to move for your plot to remain interesting. So it really doesn't matter precisely what scale you're at, um, unless your players are really particular and want to deal with all the necess necessities of traveling a long distance. I find that aspect of storytelling to be rather boring um, if they're just on the road. 
But I mean, if you want to tell a road trip story, then tell a road trip story and go ahead and throw some random encounters in there and say, you know, you're on the road for six weeks or whatever. Uh, Dalcos is, asks, is the capital the same country as the other two cities? I want to say decidedly not. Um, maybe this is a good time to draw borders, actually, because we've got kind of our three geographic regions that I wanted to have. Let's draw some borders. Um, for that, I am going to grab a new layer. Beep. Uh, and let's fade out. Let's lock the hex grid and fade it down a bit. Maybe not that much. Okay, that'll do. So we've got our terrain. Uh, let's talk about some. Let's talk about some borders. So we've got a few pretty clear natural boundaries here, but we might as well make lines on a map because that's what European nations do. They make lines on maps. Grab my active layer. Okay. Um, so we're going to say that one national border comes in like this, follows the ridge, like so, all the way out to sea. So that's one country here in the lower left, this plateau that we talked about. Other country is going to own this desert, the region that we've called Black Hills, and now we're at a quandary. Does Tincliff belong to the same, the same country as Copperholm, or does it belong to the country that has the um, Black Hills area that we said is up over here? Uh, what, si what side of the border is Tincliff on, north or south? And I'll give chat a minute to catch up with the delay. Meantime, simplify, make what I really do need to save my stroke styles. That would be nice. Make it heavy, and I feel like international borders are frequently dashed lines. So we're talking about this. <laughs> Liner says it should be disputed territory. Delco disputed. All right, uh, sounds like chat wants it to be disputed territory. All right, Tincliff is officially uh, in, in uh, unclaimed, unaligned, possibly disputed territory. Things are taking an interesting turn here. Yeah, maybe there's enough natural resources that uh, like these mountain towns can basically function independently. Uh, that's possible. We already kind of said that Tincliff's dependent on exports for food. We also said, uh, we also said that Tincliff is owned, like the whole town is owned by some dwarven baron. So maybe it's like someone's personal canton. Uh, I like that actually. I like that a lot. Uh, let's dash this guy. That's the wrong dashes. Those are the right dashes. There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. How do I? Okay, I don't know how to make the strokes so that I'll be saved. I have to figure that one out. Um, so, okay, we've got two borders now. If these are going to be disputed territory, um, then we need to kind of draw a territory line that's agreed upon, and then we can call the area in between disputed. Uh, so I want to say maybe from the edge of the desert. Yeah, let's do this. Let's say that one country... Let's say that the mountains are disputed. Let's say the whole the whole bloody mountain range is a battleground because it's full of natural resources. Everywhere, but not including Copperholm. I want to say that's controlled territory. That belongs to someone that's safe. Uh, da, da, da. Four points. The stashes. Yes, okay. So, um... Yeah, maybe both countries claim it. So now we need to name. Now we need to name these places. Uh, we can give them placeholder names, but I really just want to uh, give these countries names right off the bat here. So let's get some nice big formal-looking lettering. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. What's a good? Eh, screw it. I'll use times. <laughs> can do, change it later if it if it doesn't look uh, imposing enough. Mm -hmm. All right. Naming things is always a challenge. 
Uh, if you're having a hard time coming up with a name for something, just give it a placeholder name. That's why this campaign setting is still called Red Potato. Because on the very first video, uh, we needed something to call this place, and I didn't want to come up with one at the time. So this one is our origination. Uh, this one is our valley nation. This is disputed territory. And this one is more of a plains type area. Uh, Dagger Shore Vale. R ruckus, ruckus, that sounds like the name of a uh, region in WoW, but sure, we will call it Dagger Shore Vale. Any other suggestions in chat? Always feel free to shout them out. Uh, Dagger Shore, I like that. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Yeah, no. There we go. That's a bit heavier. Move this up there. Rotate. All right. You have Dagger Shore Vale for one. Uh, we can also give places and names that sound like, you know, that sound foreign or sound non English. Uh, if we want to, we can say that these are places where th different people, where they have a different kind of uh, language, and thus they'll name things, well, differently. Uh, I want to call this one... Uh, what are we going to call these ones? I don't know yet. We might just stick with placeholder names. Uh, if someone in chat comes up with a name, though, at any point in the next 20, 15 minutes, feel free to shout one out. Um, oh, speaking of which, it's been 20 minutes. So anyone who's just joining us or anyone who's joined in the last 20 minutes or so, um, this is a weekly interactive podcast uh, about creating a campaign world for D&D &D or any other tabletop role-playing game, really. Uh, feel free to um, shout out questions, uh, and I'll try and answer them. Additionally, we're, I'm always open to suggestions, so I'm constantly going to be pulling chat uh, for what people's ideas are because uh, I want this to kind of be a collaborative effort. Uh, so if anyone has just joined in is kind of feeling hesitant, please feel please try and feel welcome here. Uh, this is brainstorming. There's no terrible ideas. Um, so uh, feel free to shout out stuff. Uh, I'm going to give this one a temporary name that's actually a name for something from a different setting of mine. Um, this is a nation name I have used before um, for a large plains nation, so feel free to uh, yell at me all you want to. But I'm going to call this one Kazal. Um, or Kazal, if you will. Uh, it's just a word. I have no idea if it's a word in any language. It's just a word I picked to kind of represent it because it sounds, you know, like a big... Pl it, I don't know. I like the sound of it, so I'm going to stick that there. Yes, I know. I made it bigger. Uh, generally speaking, in map making, the size of text is representative of the population size. But let's just say this. Is, let's make this a bit bigger. Ridge Nation... Uh, I'm going to call this one, what am I going to call the ridge place? Uh, I feel like it's, so it's on an elevated, it's on an elevated piece of terrain. I'm going to call it Windland for now. Perhaps a lame name, but uh, again, it can be a placeholder. We don't have to finalize anything yet. Uh, and if anyone wants to start using this map for their own purposes, uh, you can feel free to rename it. Uh, I'll, okay, we have a suggestion here from Kimba Derp. We have uh, Alvilda Plateau. I like it. Does does that mean anything in any other language, or is it just a name you came up with, uh, Kimba? So we'll call this area Alvilda, and then the plateau upon which it sits is the Alvilda Plateau. Uh, I quite like that. Uh, and I'm going to give this place, this mountain ridge a name just for the hell of it. We're going to call it... Um, we're going to call it the Mountains of Metal. Uh, 
and we'll label it as a disputed realm. All right, so we've got that. Uh, let's also throw this. Oh, we need to make these smaller though. That's a good size. There's Copperholm and we want Tin Cliff. Kimba says that the Elvilda is a Viking name, meaning Battle of Elves. That is really metal. I love it. Okay. So we have Elvilda, Battle of El aka Battle of Elves. Um, maybe this is a good time to talk about races, actually, now that we've got three nations here. Uh, let's talk about these three nations a bit uh, with the time we've got left in today's stream. So we've got the nation of Alvilda, Dagger Shore Vale, and Kazal. These names obviously certainly look like they come from different languages. Uh, additionally, we know we have the language of Copperholm. We have the city of Copperholm Hill here. Yeah, I guess elves live in Elvilda, um, Dalcos. That's kind of what I, where I think we're going here. Is uh, I think we want to go one further and say not just elves, but Viking elves, because I like the sound of that. Uh, one thing I love to do with campaign settings is take these races that have standard tropes attached to them uh, and try and twist them around. So maybe these are still these maybe these are still Tolkien's elves. So you know, uh, tall, fair, those kinds of elves, the kind of elves that largely described in the D and D and Pathfinder and things like that. But let's take their kind of attitudes and their culture and throw that out and put something else in its place. So I like the idea of making these kind of elves, but they, they but they feel Scandinavian kind of. Uh, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so thank you for the suggestions, chat. Uh, Daggershore Vale. It's a it's an English name, clearly. Um, I expect. Now you want to build an elven barbarian. Uh, Leinart points out that the dwarves might live in the plains area, considering that a baron owns Tincliff. That's quite likely. All right, hey, we've got a suggestion for the capital, too. All right. Kimbaderp Kimba says we should call it Asmund, or Asmund, which means divine protection. See, I don't speak any other languages apart from a very small smattering of French, so I really like it that we've got someone in chat today who can give us language uh, suggestions from a different language. That is awesome. Diving protection. Oop. Okay. I can't type, apparently. Okay, I've been drawing. Now I can't type. Uh, divine protection. Love it. Um, so we've got Copperholm, and we've got probably other towns, but I'm going to say uh, Daggershore Vale. Maybe this is humans. Uh, so there's the natural assumption that common equals English. Uh, that one I don't see any particular difficulty to change. Most players speak, most players that I play with at least speak English. Um, some of them also speak other languages, but primarily English. Um, so I'm gonna say cop, I'm gonna say Daggershore Vale is humans. Uh, they've got the elves up in Elvilda, and Kazal can be uh, dwarves. But Kazal is going to be a big place, right? You might need diving protection with the, <laughs> yes. Uh, very true. You might need diving protection with the way with the way those hills are, because as we said, that's pretty steep. So Kazal might turn out to be a much larger uh, geographical area than Elvilda. It's hard to tell because they both stretch off the map. Um, so as a result, um, so 
Elves are the pre so we talked about at the a little while ago we talked about predominant races, right? So we said elves are the predominant race in Elvilda. Maybe they tolerate outside races, and so they have you know a city that's very cosmopolitan. You'll have dwarves and humans and halflings all working together. Um, but uh, Daggershore Vale again, primarily humans, but there's probably a good a good mix of dwarves in there too. Kozel we're gonna say is dwarves primarily. Um, I'm going to say it's a really big place. So maybe uh, maybe Kazel's going to be a bit more uh, racially mixed. Um, so we've got the borders surrounding our starting town now. Uh, when we started today's stream, I talked about how I like having uh, war, or at least the threat of war, kind of hanging in the air because it makes for... It, it's, you know, easy-baked tension, basically. Why is there a city of tieflings in the middle of disputed territory, or did I mishear you earlier? Dalcruz makes an excellent point. We have to make sure that our world's kind of consistent here. Tincliff is, it's not a city, but it's a village, uh, primarily tieflings. Um, and we did say the village is owned, uh, by, is owned uh, wholesale, basically, by some dwarven barons. So maybe the tieflings are poor folk that were brought in to work the mine. Um, maybe... Maybe they're seen as, you know, kind of, they sit on the outskirts. Maybe there's, you know, racism. Um, it's a thing that happens. Uh, I'm going to say, we're going to say the tieflings come from Kazal, I think. Uh, we're going to say there's tieflings, but as is often the case for tieflings, maybe they've been marginalized. Uh, or, that's the other question, that's the other thing. Or maybe... Maybe we say the tieflings are native to the mountains of metal, uh, as a few people are suggesting here. Um, but I like the idea that we, 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 we've, so our first adventure, um, if anyone hasn't been watching this, is going to be that they, the party arrive in the town of Tincliff and they're stuck there because an avalanche took out the train tracks. Um, so they have to help this village that's, uh, this village of tieflings that are starving because their mine is closed down because an ele a magma elemental got set loose by the miners by accident and as a result it's too safe to go into the mine. No mine means no ore means no money for food and they're not getting any help from either the nation. So let's see here. So uh, there's a whole bunch of ch stuff going on in chat which I like. Some people are suggesting maybe the mountains are super magical. Maybe it's the heritage home of the tiefling pe people. Um, perhaps in Kazel and El Vilda are not quite friendly with each other, and there's a threat for war over the Dag Dagger Shore Vale and the Mountains of Metal because of it. I'm kind of leaning that way myself, Kimba. Uh, Kimba. Uh, Dalcourt mentions why not uh, the uh, tieflings are both native and marginalized, and uh, which I say, not a bad idea. I could definitely see that, you know, there's a there's tieflings here, but maybe they're being, you know, maybe their native culture is being superseded by, uh, 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 you know, imperious and expanding dwarven empire. And that's not actually a bad thing. Uh, Rakas Bacchus asks, which direction is the party headed? Uh, let me pull up. I do have that. Uh, just a second here. Let me get um, some of my other screen grabbing the... Uh, da, 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 where are we here? Adventure one. Oh, hold on. I need a new window. Hmm. Or not. So, no. Damn it! Why would you give me two windows? Okay. Um, just a second. Let me save this and pull up the other document then. Ba 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 ba. Uh, Okay, sorry about that. So our first adventure, that's not what I thought that was. That's an SVG file. Um, da -da -da -da. That's not what I want either, damn you. Here we go, okay. Sorry about all that screwing around. Um, so our first adventure, uh, heroes arrive, train tracks are gone. Did I say which direction they were headed? Um, if anyone wants the text files, basically everything I'm making here is getting put up on my blog site, which is linked uh, below the video. 
I'm, I'm pointing down right now and I don't have a webcam, but uh, down below the Twitch video, there's a set of links to my YouTube channel where you can watch the previous videos, uh, as well as my blog where I'm posting um, both my current campaign setting, Terra Dahar, and the pages from this new campaign setting as we finish them uh, are also getting put up there. Um, you can find them in the pages section of the blog. Uh, so we did decide which direction the, par the party are going, and I'm going to say that they are... I'm going to say that they are going to Copperholm. Um, or perhaps just taking the rail line from Kazal through the Daggershore Vale to parts unknown. <laughs> Delcor says, congrats, you've made a fictional region that I care about the politics more than where I actually live. Uh, that is good. That is good. If you can make your players care about this uh, as much as you do, then you are truly uh, winning. Wow, okay, uh, region. Let's get this back up. Uh, so, safe to say that there's probably a lot of backstabbing back and forth goes. I mean, we can't say that the state of politics is the same forever. But we're going to say that... Uh, So, um, Daggershore Vale is Belgium, if people who understand uh, world history. Daggershore Vale is now Belgium, okay? Uh, it is going to be freaking steamrolled if Alvilda actually mobilizes um, to attack Kazal uh, through that area. It is going to get annihilated. Um, so it's Belgium now. Basically, it's this neutral. It's this neutral country that doesn't want anything to do with the conflict uh, between uh, Kazal and Alvilda. But it is going to be steamrolled if they actually start fighting over territory. Um, so basically, Alvilda. Maybe the maybe they've landed settlers somewhere in the mountains of metal. Uh, maybe there's you know. So Alvilda is literally Hitler. Wrong war. Alvilda is the Kaiser. Wait, is that right? No, yeah, that's right. Yeah, world. Yes, we're talking World War One here. I had to think for a second. Um, world War One was the uh, the in uh, where Bel where. Am I doing this right? Am I doing my war history right? All right, I'm not gonna pretend I under, I'm gonna pretend I'm super well versed in history, but I'm pretty sure Belgium's got screwed both times. Actually, I want to say Belgium got screwed in both world wars, um, but uh, particularly World War One is I'm pretty sure uh, where it was to attack the French, the Germans had to go through Belgium. I'm pretty sure that was World War One because World War Two they just had tanks uh, and jeeps and stuff like that and flattened uh, their way through the French defenses. Um, Wow, that was a digression. Okay, now we've got our great. Now we've got what we really set out to do for the, the region map, though. We know roughly what the area around Tin Cliff looks like. Uh, we know roughly, kind of. We know that there is now conflict in the greater scope of the world. Uh, and so now we're set up for when the adventurers finally get to leave Tin Cliff, uh, we can talk about where they're going. So, um, that's going to be it for tonight's broadcast. Uh, let me put this up. Okay, um, everything that's in this campaign setting is uh, can be used under Creative Commons 4.0 attribution, which is to say you can use this however you want as long as you give me a credit. Uh, you can credit me as just at Too Many Knives on Twitter. I would also like to know if you plan on using it or running a campaign with this stuff, um, just out of curiosity. I will also at some point be running live stream games um, playing in this setting. I've gotten buy-in now for all my regular players. But currently we don't own hardware um, to actually do the stream. Like I don't have a webcam and we need a decent microphone uh, that can accommodate. We need a decent streaming setup. Anyway, so feel, so please follow. I do, I'm do. i trying to do this very regularly uh, every Wednesday um, starting at 9 p.m. here on Twitch. Additionally, this video will be put on YouTube uh, usually later tonight or early tomorrow. Um, please, uh, so please feel free to, uh, if you can't always make it, you can always go back and watch the video later. 
Um, C. Hillier 17 did my lovely title graphic here. Uh, next week, I'm going to be talking a bit about uh, monster creation. Uh, C. Hillier 17, same guy who did my titles here, uh, draws monsters a lot. And he has put up a monster on his DeviantArt with a challenge for a GM to make a monster out of that art. So I'm going to go do that uh, next week. Uh, we'll also then jump back to our setting here and probably continue talking about cities and politics for a while. So have a good night, uh, Twitch. Have a good night, everyone in the chat, everyone who's watching. And I'll see you guys next time.